the SEC's wishes have been granted. We're going to do a quick video breakdown here of the three things that the SEC now gets to take a look at. This is an SEC versus Ripple update. We have a motion to compel that came from the SEC. They're trying to get three things. We're going to break down each one. And Judge Netburn has granted the motion to compel in full. So the wishes have been granted. Here are the three things. Before we get into it too, by the way, if you're at all concerned about this case, as you should be, especially if you're an American that wants us to maintain the gold standard of capital markets, you need to continue applying pressure. We're talking about going to John Deaton's website, uh, writing that letter to your congressmen, your politicians, letting them know that this is not okay what the SEC is doing and that we want to maintain the gold standard of uh, capital markets here in the United States of America, and that includes digital assets. Uh, one of the other things that you can do is you can go to Twitter right now and Fruition Productions, the company that's behind this XRP Unleashed documentary, they just released trailer two, a little teaser, and I was uh, uh, featured in it along with Jimmy Valley and John Deaton. Huge shout out to those gentlemen. And I would encourage you guys to go share that and just continue to share everything in regards to ETHgate, everything that we've been exposing. We have to continue applying pressure. Now, uh, the, the video is already over, I think, 600,000 views on Twitter. We need to push that thing past a million. And this documentary, whether it goes onto Netflix, Amazon, wherever it goes, it's going to shine the light on the ETHgate case and the truth about XRP. <clears throat> now, my apologies, I'm still getting over the snivels here, which is why another reason why I wanted to come out into nature and breathe in some fresh air and uh, give you guys this fresh update. So first off, the financial statements for 22 and 23. The judge has granted uh, this motion in full. The first thing is the financial statements. Second thing is all of the post-complaint sales to institutional investors. So the SEC now gets to see all of the contracts uh, that Ripple did with institutional investors after the lawsuit was filed. The third and final thing is the SEC now gets to see the proceeds. How much did they make off of these sales? So there's three parts to it. The financial statements, all post-complaint contracts, and then and only to institutional investors. And then the third point is going to be how much money did they make? Now, what is this all about? What is this to determine? Because we already know that XRP in and of itself is not a security. Got that, check. And that's not going to change until that gets approved, or sorry, appealed to a higher court. And upon that uh, ruling from a separate judge in a different court overturning this, nothing is going to change in regards to XRP not being a security. What we're talking about now is the SEC trying to rack up this fine, disgorgement, whatever it ends up being, right? And so this is why I dropped a video about a month ago talking about Ripple having three billion on the line because what we've noted is that they've done about three billion uh, that we're aware of uh, institutional sales post complaint. Uh, that came out in one of the earlier documents. And so right now we're in a period of discovery uh, for the remedies. And so now the SECs wanted to get this information. Now they're going to get it. Ripple's gonna have to turn it over. And I expect this to actually go through pretty quickly because it's already ready to go. They're just going to send it on over to them. And then the date that we're now watching is February 12th. That is when the discovery period for the remedies is supposed to settle up and be over. So we're going to get this uh, given to the SEC. And all they're trying to do is rack this bill up. So if they can say, remember, the original lawsuit was for $1.3 billion but only the institutional sales were considered securities offerings, which brought it down to about 700 million. Now, if the SEC can include and say, hey, look, you know, they did 3 billion worth of sales outside of this. So now you're taking it from 700 million all the way up to 3 billion. Now, are they going to get a fine for 3 billion or a billion? No, you know, it's gonna be much less, but we just got the update from John Deaton and there he explained that the SEC most likely um, is only going to get a small portion and he believes that there's not going to be a settlement There's no settlement talks really happening in his opinion and he believes that we're going to see a Relatively speaking slap on the wrist fine for ripple, you know and, and he thinks it's going to be way less than the legal fees that they paid which was 200 million dollars they've spent 200 million dollars battling the SEC and when this is all said and done hopefully we're talking about a fine of 20 million 50 million but much less than the legal fees. Well, this could change that part of that, right? 
if the SEC can say, hey, this isn't 700 million that we're talking about. This is 3 billion. This is even more, you know, we'll see about that. But what's important to understand is we're not gonna get to see those documents, those contracts, uh, the financial statements, the contracts. We're not gonna get to see that. That's all gonna be hidden. But as we've been doing with this case, every time the judges make rulings and they cite certain things and they black out names, they black out companies, and, and whatever they have to black out, they get done. But we can still look inside these and, and we can get the gist of what's taking place. So I do believe that uh, because of this, we're going to get a little bit more insight into Ripple's business, how well ODL is doing. And so in that regard, this is going to be fantastic. In Ripple's defense, I really hope that this isn't going to help, uh, you know, the SEC get something like 100 million or 200 million out of them. Um, that would be absolutely ridiculous. Remember, none of these institutional investors were harmed. And if they were, they're institutional accredited investors. There's no reason, right? The SEC is supposed to be here to protect the regular guy or gal, right? And so it's absolutely insane what they continue to do as they get exposed in the courts. They continue to press down with no shame, right? And so they had to just forfeit that case against debt box or basically they're trying to, they issued a motion to dismiss. And in regards to the Ripple case, they've been pushed back. The interlocutory appeals got denied, right? But it doesn't stop them. And now they get a pry into Ripple's business. And, you know, once again, regulatory capture 101. I cannot wait to see John Deaton in this documentary, put it all together with the diagram and everything. That looks so badass. But you guys already know the deal. We got to continue to expose this. And the SEC versus Ripple case should be done uh, probably in the first half of this year is kind of what this is looking like for time frame. Once again, the discovery phase for remedies that we're in right now is supposed to be ending by February 12th. Um, if that gets extended for some reason, sure. And then we should get some sort of ruling from Judge Torres. Hey, you guys got a $20 million fine. You guys got a $50 million fine, which sounds like a lot, but for a company like Ripple that's sitting on a billion dollars cash, over 25 billion worth of XRP, they're going to survive, right? And once this case gets put behind us, uh, we've opened it up for everyone to come on in and start doing deals with Ripple and start using XRP. And we got the announcement last week, actually. Well, it wasn't an announcement. It was kind of a nonchalant post on LinkedIn that a Ripple employee put out saying that they're about to be offering new products to U.S. partners for their Ripple payments product, which includes ODL, uh, which settles with XRP as well. So uh, we're going live in the US here, it looks like already. So we already have utility that's gonna be going live here in the US. Um, this case should be concluding this year. We look at the DeFi that's coming to the XRP ledger. And this is all why I am incredibly bullish. I've never been more bullish on XRP as a matter of fact, right? I've keep on digging, show me something to, you know, challenge our, our view, our thesis on this project. And we just continue to see that Ripple, tremendous spot as a business, and the XRP Ledger is just now handing the developers the tools to build us the products uh, for the retail end, right? We're not just relying on Ripple to build out this XRP Ledger ecosystem. We are watching as developers are now choosing the XRP Ledger and more people are gonna be coming. I just dropped a video. Will XRP follow Flare? Look at the Flare ecosystem. You know, they just have a little bit of DeFi and it's incredible what just a little bit of DeFi can do for a project. And so this is going to give you a community that wants to hold projects, whether they're going down, whether they're going up in price, because they're getting utility out of the ledger, right? So uh, I'm just really excited to see this case finally conclude. We are so close. I know it's been three years. The damages, I think, are well over $500 billion done to the XRP community. Um, and, and once again... If you're pissed off about this like the rest of us, what you can do is you can go to Twitter, go to Fruition Productions, share out that teaser, and um, get the word out, you know? It's funny, and it really exposes some people that haven't mentioned ETHgate once. They're in the XRP community. Have they mentioned ETHgate once? No. To me, that's a tell. It, it just shows that you don't really care about fighting for capital markets here in the U.S., because you don't understand how big of a deal this is. You don't understand what's at stake. If you did, you would be shouting from the rooftops, right? That the SEC is corrupt as hell. We caught them. We have the facts, timeline, and evidence that's not in dispute. And we know the backdoor dealings continue to go on to this very day. 
Let's get, you know, let's take it to an end. Let's stop this. This is not how America is supposed to be working. And when we look here at the rest of the world, they're getting all of the investments, all the entrepreneurs, all the capitalists, and America is getting left behind. You would almost think that these people have an agenda to destroy this country. With that being said, if you guys appreciate the update, you guys know what to do. I'll see you guys in the next one. Everything's at ZachRector.com.